Let's take a closer look at the new step in Audi's Quattro development. It's the end of the 1990s and we have Quattro Audis with longitudinal engines and 5 and 6 speed manual gearboxes and 5 speed automatic gearboxes. Additionally, Audi now offers a free NTT with transversal drivetrain and Haldex all wheel drive system and calls them Quattro as well. During this time, the gearbox department got really creative and now additionally developed dual clutch gearboxes and continuous variable transmissions. Together with gearbox supplier ZF, Audi developed a new generation of 6 speed automatic gearboxes for Quattro all wheel drive. By the way, ZF was founded to build gearboxes for Zeppelins and became one of the largest transmission suppliers in the world. Check out my Zeppelin video series to learn all about that. So Audi basically took the newly developed ZF internals and adjusted it for their package. Here they had a great idea, which changed the Audi package and improved the old Audi overhang problem. They decided to place the torque converter behind the front axle. This was possible because they connected it to the engine with an adapter plate. That way they could position the engine 103 mm further back, which had a huge impact on the front package and they called this gearbox 09E. This was the first product of this new transmission generation and it was a huge step. The internals used the Le Pelletier design. The inventor was already 75 years old at that time and holding the pattern for it. For six forward gears and one reverse, the gearbox only needed five clutches. The previous 01V gearbox needed seven clutches for just five gears plus reverse. And every clutch is having some slight friction, so the less clutches you have in an automatic gearbox, the less internal friction and hence more efficiency you get. Because of less components, the 09E gearbox could be lighter at roughly the same outside dimensions. It was designed for up to 650 newton meters and internally called AL600. 6Q. They combined it with the well-known Torsen Type A mid differential with a 50-50 distribution. Audi used a new transmission oil with less viscosity and optimized the gearbox's oil pump for less leakage and hence more efficiency. Additionally, they used more efficient gear pairings. So all in all, the internal efficiency of this new generation of gearboxes increased significantly. But there was more. It also had a decoupling function of the drivetrain during standstill when you are idling on D. So you need less power from the engine which burns less fuel and you need less brake pressure to hold the car. Also now the new gearbox offered additional pedal shift in D and S at the steering wheel. 8 seconds after the last manual shift the gearbox goes back to automatic mode. If you are in a corner it delays the countdown to up to 40 seconds. Also multiple down and up shifts were now possible, for example from 6th to 3rd gear. The gearbox now talks to the engine's ECU for rev matching, which made shifting 50% faster. But this function was not activated in US models because of a high risk of customer misuse. Audi was careful here now after the unintended acceleration case of the 1980s was still running at this time with no end in sight. Anyway, so Audi had a great gearbox in the shelf now, which they originally designed exclusively for the A8 D3. And the biggest advantage was the new package with the resulting further back engine position. It didn't solve but significantly improved the disadvantages of the old DKW F9 concept of the 1930s, which had its advantages but also created many problems. If we remember, already the F9 had the problem that the radiator did not fit in front of the longitudinal engine, so they placed it behind on the gearbox. Check out my DKW F9 video series to learn all about this design. When Piech joined Audi in the 1970s and wanted to compete with Mercedes and BMW, the straight 6-cylinder engine didn't fit, so they put in 5 cylinders and closed the power gap by turbocharging. And in the 1990s the same problem again, when the V12 engine didn't fit to compete with Mercedes and BMW, they developed the much shorter W12 engine. All this just to reduce the front overhang and to improve weight distribution, but they never changed the general concept and stick to the old DKW F9 design. Side effects were also 
but Audi always had more expensive parts like radiators and engine components further forward, which means worse insurance rating, and because of a blockage of a radiator package, Audi needed 30% larger coolers than BMWs for the same performance. So now, in 2002, 67 years after the F9 development, the repositioning of the torque converter behind the front axle was a significant change. First, all A8 D3 models with automatic gearbox and Quattro used the 09E gearbox. In 2003, the Bentley Continental models came on the market and also used the new 09E gearbox with the improved package. A car that was missing out on that was the VW Phaeton, because of the intense rivalry between VW and Audi during the Phaeton development. Check out my video series about this with the link below. So the Phaeton W12 uses an older 5-speed gearbox and for the V10 they designed a bespoke gearbox with upgraded internals for up to 1000 Newton meters. They put it in a traditional Audi gearbox case and the result is the most extreme package with a V10 engine hanging very far forward, which also explains the pointy design of the Phaeton nose with the long overhang, despite the fact that the Phaeton was designed for 300 km per hour. Because Audi didn't need an automatic gearbox for more than 600 Newton meters for every engine, they designed a light version, the 09L gearbox. This one was designed for up to 500 Newton meters and even 14 kg lighter than the previous 5 speed gearboxes. But for this one, they used the traditional package again with torque converter in front of the front axle, because the weaker engines were also the shorter ones. The 09L gearbox was used for the S4 B6, B7 generation, C6 and later models of the D3 with weaker engines. And also my Phaeton 3 liter TDI has this 09L transmission. The same internals of this new gearbox generation were also used for the new Audi Q7, but because it used the extreme off-road platform of Touareg and Cayenne with reduction gear and diff locks, although the Q7 never had that, the case design is different. The innovation the Q7 brought on the road was the new rear bias torsion differential type C, which we will learn all about in a later part. And when Audi got the idea to put the V10 engine in the new S6 and RS6, they combined their capable 09E gearbox with more rearward engine position with the rear biased mid differential. Based on all these experiences, they then designed the 0B6 gearbox for the new A4, A5 and Q5. It used the same concept but was optimized again with 50% faster shifting time, less weight, another 18mm further rearward engine position, an own additional oil pump only for the mid differential and it was now the new standard design in mass production and not just in a few luxury cars. So the gearbox design in the 2000s at Audi improved packaging significantly. They could increase efficiency and bring the quattro all-wheel drive to another level with better weight distribution and new differential technology. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for early access and more videos like this. See you at the next one.